Kalyasor, a small village located on the National Highway 58, 140 kilometers from Haridwar, is widely known amongst the people of Garhwal region for highly respected and devotional goddess Durga called Dhari Devi, half a kilometer down the National Highway 58. The ugly ghost landslide Kalyasor is named after this place. Kalyasor landslide, one of the disastrous landslides of complex nature, is located on the strategic National Highway 58, which links rest part of the country with the amazing hilly terrains of Garhwal Himalayan region, which ends at the two of the holiest places of the country, Badrinath and Kedarnath. This landslide was initiated in 1920 and since then it has been advancing. It has repeatedly recurred many times in 1952, 1963, 1969, 1972, 1984 and 1985. The major event took place on 19 September 1969 when the slide witnessed a huge collapse and blocked three-fourths of the river flowing at about 100 meters below the road level. In the history of landslide from 1985 until 2008, the slide behaved silent. During these years, spite of heavy rain and the slide did not occur and everybody has taken it for granted that the slide has been stabilized. However, CRRI has other views and study done by CRRI indicates that the slide was not stabilized. When the slide reactivated again in 2010, with a tremendous power and speed. As a result, huge amount of material generated which covered the highway for 95 meter length. Millions among the tourists, the locals and workers have been affected, creating unrest in the population of both the side of the highway. The slide remains active for 45 days and intermittently for 5 months. Starting from the foothills of Himalaya at Rishikesh, the highway and the river can be seen running closely almost all through the route. Steep terrain, dissected topography, roaring rivers, deep gorges and intermittent forest covers, tiny villages on the top of hills make the journey beautiful. Unfortunately, it is not always the case. The ugly face of landslide and light process makes the journey very risky and fearful and many a times a nightmare. The nature is beautiful and shall be respected. Unmindful, unlawful, misplanned construction force the nature to strike against the human. Central Road Research Institute, a premier laboratory on road research since 1952, engaged in carrying out research and development on all aspects of roads and highways. Landslide hazard mitigation and management is one of the major thrust areas of the institute since its inception. CSIR Central Road Research Institute which was established in 1952. As a matter of fact, we are in this uh, Diamond Jubilee year. Uh, the, it was established on 16th of July 1952. And you may be aware that we are engaged in various R&D studies related to highways and transportation. But one of the main important aspects of our R&D studies is the studies of the landslide. The uh, occurrence of the landslides, the reasons why the landslides are occurring so frequently and then what are the mitigation measures that we should undertake after the landslide happens. Many institutions in the country have already worked on this particular landslide. A few of the PhD theses have already been written but the slide remains active. 
This was the major motivating factor for CRRI for attempting to study the Kalyasor landslide once again and fill the gaps to fully understand it. The study involves the Department of Science and Technology and Council of Scientific and Industrial Research who have sponsored the project. The CRRI in its observation and study came to the conclusion it was an ever after occurring natural phenomenon of landslide happening in Kalyasor. A team of scientists have done a commendable job in difficult landslide areas of the country. Landslide don't strike as other disasters like earthquake, flood, cyclone, etc. They're widely spread and occur almost every day at some or other part of the nation. The economic losses are more than the losses from other disaster. It's like a cancer which kills gradually and sometimes without indication. The basic aim of the project was to find out the right causes, mechanism and design of suitable remedial measures for long-term stability. The study involved topographic, geological, geomorphological, geotechnical and socio-economic aspects. The geological and geomorphological studies are the two most important influencing factors which have a number of attributes within their limits. The large scale base map prepared first time in 1 is to 500 scale has provided the opportunity to map the micro details of various contributing factors. These micro details have helped to understand the landslide in a better way. The geological studies involve the type of rock, their characteristic, their attitude, the structure etc and relationship of these with the slide. Folding observed in the rocks has been associated with the displacement at places, fractured condition of rocks, generated small to medium sized blocks that keeps on getting deposited on the side trench of the highway. Contact between metavolcanic and quartzite is very distinct at the crown part. Metavolcanic intrusive are highly weathered and exist as a loose unconsolidated to semi-consolidated material. The geomorphological setup indicates the manifestation of the morphological changes occurred on the slope over the decades. In fact, landslide is one of such manifestations. You see how the terrain has changed over the years. The cliff, the steep rupture surface of the top has got enlarged by 40 meters since 1984 and in 2010 alone it has got enlarged by 20 meters during one event of sliding. The cliff between the crown and displaced material become irregular because of the numerous gullies. There are many cracks above the crown part presence of cracks on the building and subsidence and cracks on cultivated terraces indicates that the village 200 meters above the slide is also suffering due to the landslide. The area which is also micro zoned following some established geomechanical methods characterized the area into various zones and subzones to their degree of susceptibility for future to fail. Most of the pedestals have shown movement ranging from 1.74 to 3.69 meters. Pedestals shown significant movement have been located near and above the crown parts. The monitoring work was planned to be continued over a long span of time but unfortunately the nature had to strike again and the slide with tremendous power and speed detached the huge mass of debris and jolted the slope which continued unstoppable up to 45 days and intermittently for 5 months. This has spoiled all our efforts 
for further monitoring since all pedestal installed on the sensitive areas have moved out. The reactivation of the landslide in 2010 proves that the movement we obtained through the monitoring of pedestals was correct as main sliding part during the reactivation was the area of the crown where pedestals have shown noticeable movement. The scheme of remedial measures designed for long-term stability based on the outcome of the study had to be implemented by the Borders Roads Organization, a premier institution and custodian of border roads in our country. But due to repeat of 1960 Lion Nike event, in the year 2010, August has shattered our dreams of implementing the designed measures. We, first time in the history of the slide, tried to estimate the total cost on only detouring for 45 days, the duration when the road was blocked. It was to our utter surprise that in 45 days, the exchequer had to pay over 180 million Indian rupees on travelling through alternate routes. This does not include the cost of restoration, repair, prevention, control, etc. What we have achieved? We now fully understand the causes and the mechanism of the failure of the slope and also understand the most suitable ways of the long-term prevention and protection. The gaps on the geological, geomorphological and other aspects have been minimized. A part of socio-economic losses on account of landslide has been highlighted so that the planners, maintenance agencies and the general public gets aware of the importance of the pre- and post-disaster planning aspect.